a lot of people, a lot of you guys were asking me to talk about the Pro Act. Yes. Um, and I hesitated because I am not excited like a lot of progressives are about it. And there are multiple reasons. One of them being that it really isn't going to do very much at all, as it claims. They were, uh, you have to understand why somebody like Biden, <laughs> who's literally been the the guy that's opposed uh the workers for the longest time i mean he he uh i think he was pro the uh uh repealing of uh glass seagull he was the guy that has always uh just on the wrong side of things right and he is even like on board with he went to besmer alabama right and this is where uh you criticize the hill rising Uh, i think it was you It was multiple people, too, uh, where they were trying to say, this is a good sign. Joe Biden actually wants to help unionize workers against Amazon. It's not that simple. Joe Biden doesn't want to do that. What Joe Biden wants to do is help the unions become more of corporate entities that respond to, to the union leadership that is... Let's face it. The vast majority of union leadership is corrupt. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not the members as much as the leadership, yeah. but the leadership is what matters. And we've yeah. seen this in all of our work, even with the teachers union, all, all of these, all of these things that we've covered. So that, that's a fact. So Joe Biden and the Democrats, basically what they want to do is instead of allowing this insurgence that's happening because people are angry, you know, Amazon workers are angry. A lot of workers are angry. They're not making any money. They're being, you know, laid off. They don't have any benefits. So to prevent an actual workers insurgency or workers revolution, whatever you want to call it, they're trying to pacify the uh, these this anger into a controlled sort of way through the unions and uh to to make it so there isn't an insurgency so that so basically here is a little bit of bread take it and you're not gonna you're not gonna fight back and this has happened before in history yeah. so we're gonna go over that yeah I, I think the important thing is like you know when aoc <clears throat> said there's an easter egg in this 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 last bill well in this particular bill there's a lot of blow-up mechanisms there's a lot of landmines uh including the fact that it gives the president a right just like harry truman did to crush a lot of uh, dissent and strikes and actual, kind of wild, actual like strikes, wildcat, wildcat strikes. strikes and stuff yeah. like that to say, hey, this is unlawful and you can't do this. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that is a big thing right now. And as far as unions are concerned, a lot of the unions' leaderships are terrible. A lot of the unions that are left behind are awful. Um, they function just like many corporations. They do. That's uh, yeah. terrible. And they take a lot of people's money and they don't really deliver for the worker. And that's something we need to start new unions. I mean, there's a lot of things we need to do to, to kind of get into this whole situation. Yeah. It's like if you don't have a lot of uh, jobs out here and you don't have a lot of companies that really can give the working class people jobs and money anyways, what good are the unions? We're still not addressing the real problems, uh, which we can talk about. I don't want to get take it off, which is globalism, all this other bullshit. And how do we really fix these problems? Same thing when it comes to like, you know, uh, police shootings and everything else. I think we have to fix our systemic problems within our yeah. country, like Medicare for all. I mean, if we have mental issues that are, are, are dealt with properly and we have a proper vessel you know what I'm saying? To help yeah, people who connected. need this and stuff. Everything's connected. So, I mean, I always like to go to the root of the problems. Uh, however, this does have a lot of landmines in this bill. And when these people are signing on to it, it, yeah. it you have to start going, wait a second. Why are they so easily yeah. signing on to it? And who's going to come out against it and really break down these bills and show the areas of concerns and what really what we really need to be done, what needs to be done? Right. Um, and, and these yeah. bills are always extremely long, extremely tedious to read. Yes. So people Hundreds just of pages. See, just see the highlight. Oh, DSA supports it. Oh, Let's AOC yeah, supports yeah. it. OK, oh. it must be good. Let me just jump on something I haven't read. And that's that's like the, the problem, too. Yeah. Uh, I was reading it last night. Biden's uh, presidency so far is a lot like Obama's. A lot of lip service. A lot of just for show shit. Nothing really that's really going to change the way we live and stuff like that. Nothing solid that's going to help working class people across the board. That's going to help people get off the streets. It's going to help people get Medicare. So it's a lot of fucking lip service and for show bullshit. So just be aware of that. The same thing with Biden's camp. It's the same thing. And guys like Anand going, it's a new progressive era. Bro, you got <laughs> shit in a pandemic. What progressive era? Yeah, there's no progressive Sorry, era. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay, so the... Uh, <laughs> the well, there's a, there's a lot to learn about the AFL and CIO. Like, that's just... It's not even, like, a 
fucking good union at all. <laughs> it's basically like a front. But anyway, they they posted this tweet saying Senator Joe Manchin has signed on to co-sponsor the PRO Act, saying it will level the playing field for union workers. Let's hear what our wonderful Joe Manchin, who is so always great. on the side of workers, has Blue said. Blue dog Democrat. I'm pleased to announce that I am co-sponsoring the PRO Act. 50% of unions fell in their first year of organizing. This legislation will level the playing field. I look forward to working with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to move this bill through a legislative process. You see the way he's looking off right. to the left and yeah. reading shit? Yeah. It's not like it's really, he's like out there fighting for workers and whatnot. Like, yo, no. we're going to sponsor this bill. This bill is going to do this. Just read it. Just read it. Yeah. Just give Just the people it. the show. Yeah. So, um, just Joe Manchin, <laughs> you know who he is, right? Yeah. He he was he's not for Medicare for all. He has been uh, one of the the, the guys that is like completely wait. acts like a Republican in a lot of ways. When we were trying to get the two thousand dollars for people, all of these things, like he's terrible. Why is he signing on to something that would actually help people? You need to ask those questions. So <laughs> after Joe, shooting down the minimum wage, right? Right. right. <laughs> after can, being uh, so adamantly yeah, against, I'm the not going to get working, but here I am going to help you. Come I'm on, good. guys. Uh, okay, so John Nichols said, if you look at the 1950s, when you had the uh, highest rate of unionization, you had one of the lowest rates of income inequality. This is uh, you, f what U.S. Representative Mark Pocan said on why passing the PRO Act will not just strengthen unions, but in fact strengthen society. Very vague, by the way. Mark Pocan is a guy who was the, uh, the what is it, the chair of the Progressive Caucus in the Democratic Party. Yeah. Uh, he stepped down. Because guess what? He was made to look a fool and Jimmy Dore d eviscerated him in one of his videos. He is he's he was against Medicare for all. He's a faux leftist. He actually uh, was Bourgeois left was one of the people that supported Sanders when it was convenient, but has supported corporate Democrats in, in Wisconsin. And I know this because I know people in Wisconsin and they con they do not like this guy. This guy is, is a corporate Democrat and he pretends to be progressive. And here he is talking about strengthening unions. And the thing is, it is not enough to strengthen unions because, like we said, the union leadership is often corrupt and they don't do anything for the workers. You need to strengthen workers' rights without yeah. the unions. And, like, uh, unions are good, but right now unions are corrupted in a lot of ways. This is what people need to understand. You can't just – it's, yeah. like, systemic now. Yeah. Like, the root of the problem is the fact that workers have no rights – and they're still paying dues, and these people aren't doing anything. Yeah. You know who would start, like, we have to start new unions. You know who would be good people to ask to start new unions? Socialist. Communist. Yeah. People who fight for workers. But they got everybody so duped and dumbed down that the fact that they won't even look that way in that direction for people who are actually fighting for workers' rights. We need new unions in here that are going to spark the modern day for workers whatnot but there's a lot of other work behind the scenes that needs yeah. to be done too as well and mark pocan was also attacked by amazon workers so this isn't like he's not usually on the side of the right side of we things. need to listen to somebody who knows what they're talking about yeah. fam like ryan grimm and aoc right? yeah ryan grimm and aoc you know they've been on the right side of things especially as a late Never. you know they were against force of vote you know they're still talking about uh, ryan grimm still going after jimmy Dore, saying that jimmy Dore's trying to deplatform all these things are happening right but here is what ryan grimm had tweeted right he said the pro act calls are having an effect angus king just signed on we reported earlier he was leaning that way four holdouts remain now it's three uh, I believe, uh, I, I forget who the three are. I know cinema is one of them, but now it's three. And that's, that's the thing. The Intercept did a whole article on it, how great the pro act is. And, uh, they had the list of all the people that were supporting it here. And so, so here's the thing, right? The calls are having an effect. We are like, they're like here and I'm like here, I'm sorry, but your phone calls to support something that is not really going to change much for workers at all. It, they're trying to make you feel like electoralism, that, that you know, pushing th these politicians works. That these politicians, if you make enough phone calls, they're going to respond to you. And that's just not the case anymore because guess what? They, you don't have money. You're not, you're not giving them money. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, you're, they're not even in charge. We have these these corporations like like Amazon, these co other corporations, these union leaderships that are getting rich off of the backs of workers. That's what's happening. And nobody's talking about that. Everybody's like, oh, the pro act, the pro act. But they're not talking about 
what what's the problem with it is and now i would like to believe right i would like to be like ryan Graham and believe that this is uh this is going to solve all our problems and so there's aoc of course if you if you guys have noticed the relationship between aoc and ryan Graham, like come on it's getting uh, a little bit cozy there <laughs> it's fam. very cozy Get a little bit cozy the call works folks hashtag pro act okay so they're all focused on the PRO Act, right? They're not focused on anything else, though, right? On getting people more money, on Medicare for All, on on what housing crisis. No, now it's all about the PRO Act. Ooh, we're going to allow workers to unionize more easily, et cetera. Um, and so... <laughs> this that, is violence. She, yeah, people are, like, still <laughs> mad at her. Um, so the other issue, fam, that with the PRO Act is you have to notice the relationship with DSA. DSA, uh, who, which was the who vast didn't want leadership. Didn't want to vote. Didn't want to vote. Uh, protects AOC at all costs. Yep. Has uh, been instrumental in getting the word out about the product, the positive word out about the product. DSA affiliated Jacobin also has written articles on how great it is. So they, this is Jeremy Flood. He said, DSA's organizing on the PRO Act has been nothing short of incredible. With none of the resources of a national labor federation, it's been able to direct a volunteer pressure campaign bigger than any other org in the country. Still can't believe this is real. And so this is their whole, this is my problem with this. We flipped Joe Manchin. DSA pressure worked. Our 500,000 phone calls pushed Joe Manchin to co-sponsor the PRO Act. This is my problem is that you're duping people into thinking that that's what happened. Do you think Joe Manchin is in his life, in his record, has supported anything without having some sort of vested interest in it? Or yeah. are you like, come on, why are we tricking people like this? Why don't we call it like it is? Why don't we just flat out say the PRO Act has some good things in it, but does it have the power to actually help workers to, to actually have real uh like a real workers revolution a real workers have like a, a power grab no it doesn't do that and we're gonna go over why it doesn't do that and a lot of people are gonna be pissed because they're like well this is actually good but the thing is guys there's a reason why all these people are supporting something they they want you to have faith in the DSA, which once again pushes people back into the Democratic Party. They want you to have faith in the progressives like AOC and the squad, which once again, they're pushing people into the Democratic Party. And even Joe Biden is getting accolades for saying something very basic like, oh, yeah, like we need to support unions and I stand with the people of Besmer, Alabama. Yeah. When he has done absolutely nothing, is currently doing absolutely nothing to help the working class. It's all talk. And nothing of, of substance, really. Yeah, yeah. It feels like a lot of these bills that they pass and everything is like they promise to give you a nice Movado or a Rolex watch. Yeah. But instead, they give you a, a, a swatch and <laughs> they start the bragging up. about it. Hey, it's a swatch watch, though. You know, look at this. This is awesome. Why not? It's like, well, really, that's not what you promised us. You promised to give us a lot. You promised to give us yeah. something substantial. And then you come out with all these fugazi like kind of bills that have all these landmines in them that are so huge that it takes like a, a secretary, uh, an office of secretaries to break it down about what exactly yeah. is and, it's like and you know they don't yeah. most of the time most that's most of the time thing. they don't and so uh it's like the wish app i don't know if you guys have ordered something from the wish app i haven't no, but i've seen app? it's like the memes have you seen the memes from the wish app it's like it'll show you like a uh, for girls right it'll show you like a nice dress and it's like you know twenty dollars and it's like a beautiful dress you get it in the mail and it's like it's like a freaking rag like seriously <laughs> people have posted their their <laughs> pictures of what it looked like in the picture and what you got. It's like Amazon does it sometimes. You'll order something and it'll look completely yeah. different. What was the uh, festival that they had off like all the, uh, it was like a festival. It was supposed to be crazy, but it was a big fucking thing and nobody performed. And then the, the biggest meme was a kid put up a picture of the food they were giving you. And yeah. it was like terrible. They gave you like a, a cheap bread cheese sandwich with a carrot and shit. Yeah, and they were promising like, all this it. beautiful food that's, and stuff. That's, and the, <laughs> that's the Democratic Party. Everybody was party. stuck on the island and shit. <laughs> That's it. Oh, Fire. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's literally, that's literally the Democratic this, Party. This, this is the Democratic Party's fire fest. They're, they're selling you. Here's the tickets. Everyone was bragging about it. Not good. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, uh, that was pretty funny, though. So, okay, so none other than, of course, the World Socialist website, which, by the way, you know, we disagree on a substantial amount of things. But what I do agree with them on is their criticism of the Democratic Party. And, and DSA. And DSA. And their workers. They, they yeah. know a lot about workers' rights and workers' unions. That is, even Jimmy Dore pointed this out. Um, okay, so 
I'm going to read, uh, just go along and kind of go over this article. Uh, and again, this is touching on DSA, right? They said, as our top external priority, this is their priority now. The statement declares DSA will embark on a national campaign to pass the Protecting the Right to Organize Act, the PRO Act. Um, it, it's talking about it as transformative legislation. It says it's going to give people power to uh, give power to unions to organize workers. And it's framed around the claim that the passage of the bill would be a historic win for workers of color and for immigrants. And so that's 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 the whole framing of the whole thing. Like it, it's transformative. It's the most important bill of our time, et cetera. But this bill was actually crafted by Democrats in the House of Education and Labor Committee committee to b bolster the union bureaucracies that facilitate. This is what they're saying, the suppression of the working class struggle. Why would why would something that supports unions be against workers? Well, because you're not attacking the root problem that unions are also corrupt and that they're not doing anything for workers. Yeah. Um so okay, so <laughs> it's just kind of funny because I read I read there's so many good things in this article, but we're not going to go all over it, but um they talk about the the Wagner Act and how uh, historically, you know, this has happened before mm -hmm. that there were a series of amendments that happened to the National Labor Relations Act. This is un under from the Wagner Act to the PRO Act. Yep. Um, and it was passed in 1935 and signed into law by President FDR. Eesh. So one of the criticisms of, of FDR was that he actually by with the green with the Green New Deal, with the New Deal and w with with the. Um, the the war economy basically they took a lot of rights away from workers and pacified them in this way so the wagner act was passed uh under conditions of explosive class struggle in the u.s during the great depression of the 1930s and only 18 years after the russian revolution which had of course uh powerful impetus on the growth of the class struggle internationally so that happened and uh roosevelt of course is criticized like i said because he was part to of the the regulating this this uh this labor movement so into a pro capitalist movement like i said with a new deal and societal reforms which i mean a lot of us were taught were really good and some of them were yeah but uh it subdued the threat of an actual socialist revolution yeah it established back then the national labor relations board the nlrb and that was this is critical that was that was the thing that controlled the strike waves yeah. and 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 it controlled it in such a way that you couldn't just do like a wildcat strike. Yeah. This this is the part right here that this is the to me the paragraph that means the most. Can I read this part? Yeah, yeah. Just over a decade after the Wagner Act was passed in 1947, Democratic Party politicians united with Republicans to impose the Taft Hartley Act, mm -hmm. an amendment to the Wagner Act. The bill uh the bill passed just after the end of World War II and the massive post-war strike wave explicitly banned wildcat political and solidarity strikes, secondary yep. boycotts, and included an anti-communist communist loyalty oath. <laughs> it also gave the president the right to outlaw strikes. He declared the threat to national security. The same year the Taft-Hartley was passed, President Harry Truman, a Democrat, invoked it against American workers a dozen times. Right. That is crucial so dick medhurst talked about this one time when he first was when it was going off he goes you think that fdr was just all gravy no. he fucking went in there yeah. and he took he took away your movements he used laws to fucking crush your movements yeah. the communist act of sorts which wasn't about like just communism and as a whole no, about it was about workers. workers yeah so you know and people don't yeah. people just forget that shit where they you know, want people to protest or to to Str whatever to, to 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 you know have their little like oh we're gonna stand up and blah 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 but they don't want anything to come out of it they don't want an actual strike wildcat strike to happen yeah. that is like illegal now like basically like you can't do it and so that's that's the problem with this thing right and then they they continue talking about the history and i'm i'm gonna go you know skip that but i'm just saying that there have been less and less and less worker strikes right but, you know, we had recently the teachers union yep. a few years ago. I think it was 2018. Right. Yeah. Uh, when we had the teachers strike Remember we out there in the rain. Yep. It was and like a monsoon out there. There was also a general motor strike recently as yeah. well. There was. There, but they have been decreasing. And also a lot of those strikes got very, uh, very little 
because of the problem with the unions, right? Yeah. So let's go over some key provisions of the PRO Act because these are uh, important, right? Um, so they basically talk how the Biden administration and the party, they bolster unions in order to work better with the, the, the global operations of the U.S. imperialism. I mean, this is the whole point and because they, they're talking like they're going to strengthen workers, but they're actually strengthening the, the workers' response to the corporate management. A lot of them are part of the union and leadership. So this is, again, this is a suppression of the class struggle. And uh, this is a really good point to make. It should, first of all, be stated that the PRO Act is not going to pass Congress in its present form. Republicans who generally favor dispensing with the unions altogether remain opposed to the measure and the Democrats would require a 60 percent vote in the center to overcome procedural hurdles. So it did pass. Uh, well, Joe Manchin is, is in favor, but there's a reason why Joe Manchin's in favor. They need three more. They needed uh, cinema and uh, two others. And so because this article is like a month old. So uh, that's what's happened thus far since then. In order for that to happen, what's going to happen is they're going to water it down. Basically, they're going to water it down. And one of the things that would likely be thrown out, uh, that's one of the highlights of the bill, is uh, that the bill itself would overturn the Taft-Hartley's act on on secondary boycotts, i.e. solidarity strikes. Right. And then it would prevent employers from replacing strikers. So you that is likely going to be taken out. I mean. We'll see if yeah, it's not. Yeah. I'll be like, it hasn't even gotten to the chop shit yet. But <laughs> believe me, if, if anything goes out that this is crucial here, that 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 it would turn the overturn the Taft Hartley Act. If it doesn't, if somehow it, by miracle that doesn't happen, then, yeah, it'll be a, a better bill but by definition. Yeah. But un, it's unlikely that there's just that you're going to have Manchin and Biden and all these Democrats supporting yeah. something with the, they're going to yeah. find loopholes. This guys. this is the scary part of the bill, because if they do take this part out, it's it's just done it's, because yeah. anybody who's like thinking about striking, if they know they can be removed permanently, even if they strike with a bunch of people, they're going to be hesitant to do that. You right. know I'm saying, but if there's something in there like we all right, you guys are unionized. Seventy percent of the workforce here in this in this factory is going to strike. They it's part of the deal that when you guys reach an agreement, you all have to go back to work. Then they'll they'll more likely go out and say, all right, I'm going to stand up for my rights. But right. if they remove that mechanism and you and they and you know that you can be removed, hey man, I'm rolling the dice here and I can lose everything. How do I send my kid to school? How do I pay for everything? How do I pay my rent? If I can be removed permanently, even if I walk with my my uh, union members, that's a whole different deal. That's going to fucking and that's something we have to watch out for this bill, because like we said, it hasn't even gotten to the chop shop yet. Yeah. It hasn't been watered down. And there's a lot of other fucking landmines yeah. in it anyways. It, that's how that's how the process always is. Yes. It always it gets always. Up, down. Yeah. Uh, OK. The parliamentarian so, might say something. Oh, we yeah. got to remove. <laughs> yeah. They're good. Trust me, guys. The Democrat. What have they done for people to show that they're somehow magically just going to turn around and and support you? I mean, I, I, I hope I'm wrong. Zero. I hope I'm wrong. Um, so another thing that the bill is supposed to help out with is the uh, classification of contact contract workers. Right. So like these independent contractors or gig workers. So like Lyft, Uber, DoorDash as employees. So it's it's going to it's going to list them as employees. But the law sanctions the category of independent contractors, redefining workers as employees only for the purpose of unionizing them. Yeah. So they get unionized. But the chances of them actually uh, getting anything out of it is 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 false and again this is likely going to be one of the things they take out employers will still be able to, even if this passes as this to cheat these workers out of unemployment insurance workers compensation social security and other benefits they will be free to impose various out-of-pocket costs on their employees and fire them at will which is the main problem example tomorrow you could get fired and they can just say hey you're fired this is our reason blah 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 no questions asked right it like it's there's still that that whole thing like if you do anything wrong there's no benefits to you there's no like oh you get two weeks paid none of that that's still not going to change under this whole thing um and uh the the unions of course are going to be in a better position though to organize these workers right but uh they're going to be taking union dues without getting a lot of a lot of anything because the laws are set as such that it's going to be difficult for them to get anything in, in, in the first place. One, the union leadership is set up as like corporations to adhere to. Like the, they have a, a strong relationship with um, 
the 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 employers like it's very difficult under the current system to get any of this and so it, it it's not it's going to be more like a like a labor contract rather than like oh a union leadership and they have to pay these dues by the way so you know how like florida's a right to work state and how other states are right to work and then we had ask, ask me versus janice that said you know like you don't have to pay uh dues so it kind of subdued the union uh le the union membership because of that so this bill is apparently going to go around this right to work clause by enabling employers and unions to establish fair share clauses and this would force all the workers including those who decide to opt out of union membership to pay dues to cover the cost of representation collective bargaining contract enforcement and related expenditures but what it does mostly is bloat up the salaries of the union leadership and they talk about the American Federation of Teachers Union. They talk about other unions that the leadership is making tons and tons of money. When we interviewed teachers, they were also complaining a lot about the leadership. They were complaining about the board members. Uh, you know, like it, this is a real problem. It's it's like the union leadership is in bed with, say, the corporation. Let's say the corporation is Amazon. Amazon doesn't have a union. But if they did that that you know that's what we're talking about we're talking about any any major corporate corporation that has a union the vast majority of them are corrupt there are very few unions that are corrupt uh you know the nurses union the teachers union even some of the teachers union i mean this is like it, it's very difficult this is a systemic issue you can't just solve it by by saying oh yeah. we're going to give more power to to unions without fixing the laws that give power to the workers basically yeah. um and yeah just that's basically it uh so base i just wanted to point out too that the democratic party of course is in a way trying to just curtail this growing anger and this growing desire of workers to to actually have like a workers revolution you've seen what's happened with chris malls and amazon workers and how hard they're fighting and new york and alabama and you guys have seen that simultaneously in order to make sure that doesn't get out of hand meaning that people don't actually rise up and in thousands what they're trying to do is give them a little bit of bread so they're satisfied this is they're trying to basically just squash any sort of like actual workers revolution so that's what i wanted to yeah to mention uh johnny um, did you uh, send a uh, a link to our guest perfect uh and the last perfect. thing is that uh dsa of course is behind a lot of this yeah and uh the you know you know dsa is again it's just it's corralling people into the democratic party a lot of the people that are in dsa are now actual uh work in these trade unions or or leadership in trade unions and they're really this is all about you know dsa having their hand in the cookie jar when it comes to the democratic party when it comes to the the uh just just the 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 union sort of language and verbiage but nothing to actually substantially change the whole the system as a whole so uh, and they focus a lot on identity politics to try to get people on board with this and it's really not going to do very much i hope that it passes as with a taff hartley in it i highly doubt it is i'm very suspect of all the people who are supporting it and if you guys want to show this is the bill hr 842 protecting the right to organize of 2021 um there's the summary it's basically what we what we said it's uh it just expands various labor protection related to employees rights to organize and collectively bargain in workplace but again it doesn't go deep into the strikes it doesn't change any of that stuff and um you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, it, it does make it unfair labor practices to require or coerce employees to attend employer meetings designed to discourage union membership and prohibits employers from entering into agreements with employees under which employees waive the right to pursue or join a collective or class action litigation. So that's actually a good thing. Um, yeah. And you guys can read it. It's actually it's pretty long. If you go to the summary. Yeah. or of the text i mean you guys can how, how many pages is this bill do you know johnny does it have it there by any chance just curious it's text if you go to text it should i don't know why it's not read right there oh 
Oh, it's right here. If you go to the top tab and you click on text, there it is. There it is. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty substantial. Jeez. Not, 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 you know, not crazy, not 800 but... pages, but. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's very, um, you know. 56. All right. It's not that awful. Yeah. I was reading it last night, but it's not that awful. No, I think most bills should be like that or less. You know, less than that, yeah. <laughs> dude. They should have most like people don't forget about it. Much, they should have but... standalone bills that should be like so yeah. short. So the reason for going over that was because people were asking me, you know, you should support the Pro Act and blah blah blah, and um, especially here, you know, contract workers. It really does specifically for contract workers. It doesn't do very much. I mean, if you you click on an Uber Eats now, I don't know if you guys have done that. Jesus Christ, you get. The delivery fee, you get the California something fee, you get the something else fee, the tax, and like it, it's literally adds like six to ten dollars more. Yeah. To whatever you're ordering, and the 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 freaking workers get like none of it. Yeah. They that's get none, the of, none it. of it. And and is that going to change that? No, it's not because again, the it's systemic. The issue is that we shouldn't have like. We every worker should be protected. Every worker should have the same rights unanimously, uh, treated as somebody that is you know that has you, you can't you know if you get fired you get this this and that like you get health care you get all, all these benefits. None of these people are getting any of that. 